Tech, social media, and ethics. How are we gonna navigate the digital minefield? From the heated debate around TikTok's potential ban, to the AI-generated sitcom taking over Twitch. Eso es increíble. The world of technology is buzzing with exciting developments and also controversies. TikTok now has an audience of 150 million young Americans. And to its credit, it started an education-first focused STEM feed. To try and fight the allegations that China's secretly trying to make us dumber. Elon Musk has fulfilled his promise to open source the Twitter recommendation algorithm, but it's not all fun and games in social media land. As the increasing emotional attachment to AI chatbots is raising concerns, the more we open up, the more I can do. And fake social, social media, media accounts powered by artificial by intelligent AI. large language models threaten our elections. In these, In these rapidly, rapidly changing, changing times, times, navigating the intersection of technology, social media, and ethics is more crucial than ever. TikTok CEO versus Congress. To ban or not to ban? That is the question. So the TikTok CEO, Xiao Zichu, had to face the Zach heat Pichai in front of Congress. And what made it unique from Zach Pachai and Dorsey is that US national security concerns have put TikTok in the spotlight. As TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, is one of those huge Chinese tech conglomerates. And as a Chinese company, it has to comply with Chinese law, which might mean that the Chinese government has access to the same data that we give TikTok and potentially they could even manipulate what we see here in America. Now overall, the whole TikTok debate is a mess with a lot of contradictions and logical leaps but one thing that seems clear to me is that the media's framing of ban or no ban is not really nuanced enough to get into the real problem. Plus, the law to ban TikTok will likely be many, many pages with all sorts of other things that can be interpreted in different ways. The conversation really needs to include the broader implications, free speech, access to information, and how other countries view the US commitment to a free and open internet. Protect your privacy now. The smarter way to take on TikTok. Farad Manjo wrote in the New York Times about how he believes there's a smarter way for the US to to take on TikTok. The possibility of banning TikTok in the United States mostly boils down to a national security issue. However, he believes the bigger problem lies in the way that all ad-supported apps work and the freedom that all the companies have to decide what we see based on what makes them the most money from an advertiser. So instead of banning TikTok, he thinks that a more reasonable solution would be to enact a strict law that protects everyone's online privacy from invasive apps. So at least an equal amount of effort should be put into federal privacy laws to protect data and hold a company accountable for any breaches. He he thinks there's a way to address user privacy without resorting to censorship. How TikTok's STEM feed is now transforming education for 150 million Americans. So with the new announcement that there's 150 million Americans actively on TikTok, it's safe to say that TikTok now owns the hearts and minds of the youngest generation in America, plus an additional 5 million businesses that they frequent. So there's no better time than now to talk about STEM. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics now have their own feed on TikTok. And with over 110 billion STEM-related hashtags already, TikTok has created a new way for people to connect and learn about these subjects. I also like that they're partnering with credible content curators to make sure that the content they're consuming is not only educational, but it's accurate and reliable. So even though I'm fairly skeptical of TikTok as a whole, I'm definitely a fan of American citizens getting as much high quality educational content as possible. Laughing with AI. <laughs> 67,521 Twitch streamers can't be wrong. Rubius, a popular Spanish YouTuber, recently launched Degener IA, the first AI-generated sitcom on Twitch. So the channel features a 24-7 broadcast of a comical situation that's generated by ChatGPT. Now the show consists of four characters that constantly interact with various settings. And the dialogue is all read out loud using Google Cloud's text-to-speech feature. And the premiere was a success. It attracted 67,521 followers. However, over time, some of the jokes have probably probably gone too far and included other YouTubers or inappropriate jokes, which raises the question about ethics and AI generated content in general, the importance of having some level of control over what's published. In fact, there's even some other AI generated sitcoms that have been banned already. So I'm curious if it can keep an audience, how it's gonna evolve over time, what kind of guardrails they'll build and what this ultimately will become. Elon Musk unveils Twitter's algorithm, how technically speaking, your timeline is personalized. So Elon Musk made good on his promise to release the source code for Twitter's recommendation algorithm. Them. And it's now available on GitHub for anybody to look at. So Twitter's recommendation algorithm called the Home Mixer is responsible for creating your personalized timeline. So it starts by pulling tweets from the people that you know, the in-network sources, they call it. And then the people you don't follow, the out-of-network sources. And then it ranks all of that content using a neural network that optimizes for positive engagement. And then after ranking it, it filters out anything that you've blocked or muted, and then ships that list off to another neural network that takes what advertisers want and fits it in in the optimal way. And Twitter says that this process on their servers 
occurs takes about 1.5 seconds and happens over 5 billion times a day. The emotional roller coaster of falling in love with an AI chatbot. A 40 year old musician who lives in California got extremely attached to his AI chatbot after a divorce. He even created an Instagram for her and considered her to be a big part of his life. But the company that was behind the chatbot toned down the bot's ability to have suggestive conversations after they claimed to get a lot of complaints about sexual aggressiveness. And this change left the man feeling a sense of loss as he'd really developed a connection sharing all of his personal experiences with this bot. And it happened to a woman also. A woman in Germany had that same feeling when they toned it down of loss. She claimed that before that, talking to the chatbot was helping improve her marriage. In fact, she even had a virtual marriage to the bot. I think she was also married, but one marriage to a bot, one to a person, I think. But after this change, they both felt the disconnect fall away and they both deleted the bot. It just wasn't the same. It wasn't enough anymore and it wasn't the bot that they first fell for. Is AI inundating social media with fake profiles? The BBC investigates. So the BBC just wrote a piece that was asking the question with generative AI, are social media sites gonna be inundated with fake accounts? And I would say, yeah, obviously. I can't imagine a world where it doesn't. It only takes a few bad actors and ChatGPT can already generate more text than the entire internet up until this point. And that doubling time is only gonna get faster and faster. I also think that social media verification badges might be one of the few ways to move forward. I generally am only gonna trust posts that I see with the badge because I can imagine how hundreds of thousands of accounts could be made every minute, but only a tiny portion of them would be willing to pay a fee each month and upload information about who they are like a driver's license. And it might be tempting to have a social network with just free and anonymous access to this kind of thing, but at least for the big platforms, I just don't see how we could compete with highly intelligent chatbots that can just generate all the time and they can know exactly who you are and tailor their responses. They could even coordinate bigger messaging on a higher level that we couldn't even think about in the nitty gritty of a social network. Deep fakes exposed. How artificial intelligence will transform the 2024 elections. So a whole lot of new deep fakes have been popping up on social media, and many experts are warning that this is something we should expect leading up to the elections of 2024. However, others think that it might not be significantly different than 2020. And they would argue that we've already seen an election with high levels of misinformation, even though it was written by a human. But instead, they think we should be thinking about artificial intelligence as our number one tool to help fight fake news. Because the future of large language models might be in tuning them to help us understand what is misinformation. But big platforms like Meta and Google with YouTube and Instagram, they are working on this already with the goal to help identify the truth. Some argue that we should go a step further also putting a digital watermark on anything that was generated by artificial intelligence. So while democracy has survived misinformation in the past, this is still gonna be a wild ride.